And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Today we're talking about Zongxi, which is a game in which players, what does it say here in the back? You're in old China and you are the, the Zongxi is the grand master craftsman. You're basically building different things. You're making them out of jade and bronze and, and gold and ivory, and you're building different statues and dragons and that sort of thing. Okay, that's the theme. But essentially what this is, is it's a worker placement game. It's a very straightforward one with some absolutely stunning components. Let's take a look at it and I'll come back and tell you. Before I get too much into the game, I wanted to point out just what a great insert the game comes in. It's really nice how everything fits into its spot. And you got the cards here and fit on top of these cards, which fit on top of these. And everything just fits really nice. Very high production quality. And I like even these, these pieces here. Uh, they're nice, bendable plastic. So let's talk about the pieces now. Each player is going to get two of these pieces. Uh, one is your master and one is your apprentice. Let's go to work. Do -do 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 each player has a player board in front of them. This is where they're going to put the boxes of items that they'll get, which are really nice little uh, plastic pieces. And you can put those here. You have spots for five of them. You got jade and bronze and ivory and gold, the four different colors that you'll be getting over the course of the game. And you can store them here in your spots. You're going to be building uh, items in these spots. And so let's look at the board. What this board is here is a worker placement board and on your turn and turn order is determined by whoever has the the little green buddha here but on your turn you can place out your apprentice or you can place out your master now they can both go to most of the spots on the board but the difference is where the the apprentice is not nearly as useful as the master and he will get fewer opportunities to do things in the master so let's say we're playing a four player game and what you can do, you can send out people. If you send out the master or the apprentice here, depending on how many people are there, you're going to get the goods that are up in this section. A uh, master has an opportunity to get all of them. The apprentice is only ever going to get one. Uh, if you send them out here, you get to get one of these tiles. You have to trade in, for example, this one. You need to give in a box of gold or a box of bronze for it. But once you get it, once you do that, you then put this in front of you, and from now on, in the future, you can trade gold for bronze and bronze for gold when you're building things, which can be very handy, and also this is worth a victory point at the end of the game. Yeah, uh, You can send them over here uh, to the temple, and basically this will let you draw cards when you go over to this spot, and these are special cards that will give you special abilities that you can do over the course of the game. You can send them up here to visit people. When you go visit people, you have to pay a certain amount of... Uh, that particular good. So for example, you can see up here to visit the merchant, you have to pay gold. And when you pay gold, you then put one of your little tokens that you have in front of the merchant. What you're trying to do over the course of the game, if possible, is visit all four of these people. And to visit them, you need to put one of your little tokens that you have. You have four tokens, uh, two twos, a one, and a three. So let's say I visit the elder and I pay to visit him, I put my one token and I pay one box of ivory to him. Well then, I only have two twos and a three left, so if I put a two here uh, later on and I go to fish off to pay him two bronze and I can pay the scholar three and then pay two to the other merchant to go to those different spots. But I have to drop a different tile each time when I go to visit and pay those many boxes of the goods. So goods are used for a variety of things here. You're trying to get them as much as possible. The biggest thing you want goods for, though, is to build something. Now, what you can do when you build something, you just pick something here that you have the uh, ability to build. So, for example, let's say I have four green jade pieces. I can build this jade mastery. Uh, so the way I do that is I put this on my board in the being built section. Now, the master is the only guy who can build something. And I look at the number up here and it says three. So I put the master on the three here. And on future turns of the game... I will only have my apprentice to send out, and after each turn, I will move him down one spot. When it gets to zero, then this has been built, and I put it in one of my six spots here. And it, this, it will be worth a certain amount of points at the end of the game. You can see there's a four 
up here in the corner. And it, this one gets a special ability. It lets me build, when I'm building other things, I need one less jade. And that's what all the different buildings, this one, you need one less bronze. Here you need one less ivory. Here you need one less gold. Here uh, it gives you two more spots. You only have five spots to put goods. This will give you seven. This one here, you, you, when you complete a project, it takes one less turn up there. This building here, you get to draw an extra card when you go get cards. This one here, whenever your merchant, whenever your master goes to the market, he gets an extra free good. But what you really want to build, if possible, is you want to build masterworks. You can see that there's two of them face up. Each of these takes six to build. This one needs three green, two brown, and a white. Three white, two gold, and a green. When you build one of those, it takes four turns to build it, and but they're worth eight points, and then we reveal another one. And so those can get you a lot of points. The game is over at a turn where one person builds so that there's six of these out on the board. At that point, you're going to add up all your points after the end of that round for all these that you've built. You're going to add up points for any of these tiles that you've gotten. And if you've gotten one of each, all six of them, you get bonus points. And then you get bonus points for the people that you visited over here. Tie, and then you get points for extra resources and cards that you have, but it's not a very good ratio. And whoever has the most points is the winner of Zongxi. Well, there you have it. That's the game. It is an enjoyable game. I did not dislike my playing of it at all. But, and there's always a but, isn't there? One of the problems that we ran into with this game was just the fact that the paths of diversity aren't as diverse as they feel. At the beginning of the game, when you pick your initial, at the beginning of the game, you kind of split the cards and, and you split the, the goods. And then that kind of determines which, what you're going to buy. Getting those trade tiles is absolutely critical. It changes so much of the game because when you trade the goods, when you build the, the craftsmen things later on, and when you go visit the people in town, it's really important to be able to switch colors in and out. Not to mention that these trading tiles are worth a point. So yeah, you have to give up a good to get one of these trading tiles, but it's so worth it in the long run. And so what we felt me and, on, and the players I played this game with, they felt like if we played a second and third and fourth and fifth games uh, directly after the first one that we played, and then, you know, even when I did play the second games and such, I, we felt like we were doing the same things over and over again. I didn't feel like there was a, a lot of difference in strategy. There's minor differences and minor variations. I built this, you built that, but it all comes out to kind of have a very samey feel. That's not necessarily a bad thing. There's other games that do that, like Stone Age, which aren't really that diverse. And there are some aspects of this that I really like. I like the fact that there's a big difference between your master and your assistant. You want to send your master everywhere, but you have to, you know, like, all right, fine, I'll send the assistant over here and do this. And he gets you, he helps you out some. And the cards are really neat because the cards that you do some really cool things that you wouldn't normally be able to do. So I enjoyed it. And I think a lot of people will enjoy it. It's a nice medium weight worker placement game. I'm just not seeing that it has a lot of long range possibility. And it didn't differentiate itself enough that I would want to play it over, you know, a lot of the other similar games in the market. But, like I said, stunning production values. Um, it it's a good family level, maybe maybe a little bit higher. The age here in the box says 13 and older, but I think you could do 11 and older and get away with it. Uh, so there you have it. It's not one that I'm going to like be dying to play in the future, but I wouldn't turn down a game because it is an enjoyable experience, just not one I would want to play multiple times in the same fr time framework. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.